Hey there, Superlam here. Been a little while since I did a challenge lock video or even picked a challenge lock. Um, life's still a bit hectic. Um, gonna try and pick this uh, Baldwin, which is a challenge lock made by Pikmin 1977, which he calls Gold Dragon. The key is mummified and still stuck to the back there as I got it. Um, I don't even remember if I've even put a pick into this one before. So, um, I'm not entirely sure if I can get in yet. I haven't tried. Let's uh, see if I can give it a go for everybody. Camera a little bit closer to it. It is a schlag. Looks like a C key way. Uh, we'll try the Peterson gem for starters. I think this is an 18 thousandths. Click off one. Looks like I can pick off the bottom there. That feels like three. Another click off one. It felt like three again. Two, counter rotation, and I drop some pins. Felt like five. Two. I think I overlifted five there. No, oh, he's dropping things. Back to two. Not sure if this is a five or a six pin lock. Oh, that feels like I'm overlifting things. Okay, let me move to the deforced diamond. Get a little bit more lift and control out of him. Mm, everything's pretty springy. I think I might have. Overlifted. I'm gonna try counterclockwise. Everything's pretty springy again. Oh, hold on. Oh, I might have overlifted that one again. I wonder if five is a bit of a trap. Oh, a little bit of core movement there off of, I think that was two. Some counter rotation on three. Click. And click. I lost my my false set that I had, the very slight one. I'll let him drop back down. Okay, got my false set back. Lost my false set again. Okay, back to three. False set back again. It feels like all these pins are trap pins here. Every single one of them. Just looking for that one pin to talk to me a little more. It's almost like there's a T pin or something in there. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to uh, 
clockwise here. Got a little bit of a false set again. That was off one this time. A little bit more of a false set, and that was off of four, I think. Another click off of four or five, maybe. I think that was off four or five again. Uh, it almost felt like a T-pin style thing. I think I actually bent my DeForest Diamond a little bit there. Okay, let's uh, let's see what we got in this thing. My notebook in there. Now we've got a key, so. It's mummied. I don't like unwrapping these uh, these mummied locks or uh, mummied keys. More fun for everybody else when you don't know the bidding. Because I think there's a T pin, I'm going to use a shim. It's a bit tight in there. I'm going to guess that the uh, Bible is threaded due to the hammer and ch chisel style marks that I see there. I'm going to need any tweezers and... Yeah, this guy. Smooth. All right, cool. There somewhere. So what do we have here? Seeing some T-pip, T-pin top key pins. They're also a little bit undersized for the chamber, so they're gonna flop around in there. I am also seeing threaded and two and that looks like five. Let's see what other surprises we got in here. Just the threaded in two and five, nothing else done, no undercuts, the rest are standard chambers. so it's a little bit more comfortable here. There we go. Oh, what is that? That looks like a knurled pin. You know, I never thought I'd see some of my own work come back against me. That's funny. I'll show you guys that in a minute. That almost looks like it's steel as well. That's a copper spring. Serrated gradual graduated uh, spool there into. 
That's a threaded chamber. Uh, is there... Where's my pick? One second. I'm going to go over to my workbench. I know I've got... Um, I've got a pick over here. Like little um, dental picks. And uh, I just get mine from the dollar store because they do the same job. I'm just going to... I'm not feeling a spring in there. Nope, no spring. It is serrated though, that's why I went and checked. Um, sometimes you'll get springs that will get caught up in the serrations there. Um, it just looks like that one is not sprung at all. And this looks like a knurled pin again. Very nice. Is there a spring in you? Hold on, there was a spring here. Um, one's a steel, one's a copper. I'm going to guess it goes like that because that pin is shorter. Another knurled pin. Wow. Chances are, oh, it's under a threaded chamber as well. You're going to be copper as well, yes. I'm going to bet that steel spring came from chamber two. And, yep, a T-pin. Come on. He did spring out. There is one in there. spring. Ooh. Is that a double? It is a double. Um, it did get a little bit mangled. I don't believe I did that. Um, let me just try and stick it back together here. It looks like the other spring is uh, taller overall than the um, other spring that it's attached to. So, I mean, I can stick it back together, but it's not uh, its not the same spring. So, overall, it's going to be doing that. Um, we have threadings in, what is that here? Two, four, oh no, two and four. I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, two and five. Yeah, so exactly matching the plug. And that's going to go on these two guys here. So let's take a close up look at these pins here. I'll get my pointer pick here. And get the light a little closer too. There we go. So we have this uh, T-pin key pin with a knurled, and I believe that's steel, I'll check in a minute, uh, driver, um, serrated key pin, and graduated spool um, with a serration at the top, which I'm not sure if that comes into play, we'll check that in a minute. Um, like a torpedoed, uh, chamfered top with another knurled driver, um, another serrated key pin and a knurled driver, uh, serrated key pin and a serrated T-pin driver uh, under a double steel uh, spring. Um, copper over top of the knurled ones um, and steel on top of the brass ones. Now I'm just going to go grab a magnet real quick and see if they are steel. Uh, yes, wave the magnet over top of all the stainless steel picks. Yes, they are magnetic. So, I'm curious to see if I could use a magnet to make this easier to pick. Might be something I'll try 
as a, uh, a bonus for this. <clears throat> might make, I might make a magnet part of my uh, daily toolkit to test challenge locks from now on. That might be a good idea. Um, right, now to see how they are in the plug. Now, I haven't done this in a little while, so I am a bit rusty on my usual method. Okay, so there is a couple of these that do sit rather high. Like this guy, for example. And there we go. So, these two brass guys are sitting rather high, um, and they, they do quite... They do quite effectively, although I would say this guy probably didn't need any threading under his under his belt there. There's nothing there to grab. Um, but these knurls definitely put threading on these guys. Um, they're going to grab really, really easy. Uh, that's one thing I found when I was knurling pins. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I will put at the end of my little outro video um, a test on this lock with uh, a magnet just to see if it affects anything thanks for watching tell me pretty lies look me in the face tell me that you love me even if it's fake okay for those who stuck around i took my magnet which is actually rather strong and i'm not feeling or hearing any kind of clunk or click or anything that would make me think that um, this magnet is doing anything strong enough to to pull these um, pins out away from the shear line. So, um, at least on a mortise body, um, you know, put as many metal pins in there as you want because um, this this won't do anything here. Let me grab a pick that I don't care about. Actually, I'll use this. It's uh. It's got quite the grab to it, so I don't have anything stronger than that, but uh, very clever. Thanks again for watching.